Uganda's oil exploration and production is no longer a subject of debate. It's only a question of when the black gold will flow out of the ground and how it will impact the citizens. According to the Ministry of Energy projections, there is an estimated 6.5 billion barrels of oil under the ground, 1.4 billion of these recoverable. Once it gets out of the ground, this resource will power Uganda's economy by $3.5 billion, that is an estimated 13 trillion shillings at its peak. Since its discovery, excitement is in the air in anticipation that lives will be changed, jobs created for Ugandans, and the backbone of poverty broken. Their dreams and visions that oil will propel Uganda into a middle-income state. To achieve this, government will invest 2.9 trillion shillings to construct the 1,445-kilometer-long East African crude oil pipeline and an estimated $500 million into the refinery project, a significant percentage of the overall cost. The main funders of the projects will be international oil companies, including Total, Sinoc, as well as the governments of Tanzania and Uganda. Both the pipeline and the refinery projects are expected to generate 13,000 jobs, according to the Oil and Gas Industry Baseline Survey. 15% will be for engineers and managers, 60% for technicians and craftsmen, and 25% will be for the unskilled category. The biggest question though is, are we ready to tap into these job opportunities that the sector brings? Has government prepared its youth with necessary skills to take advantage of these offers? Available research has somewhat tried to answer these questions. Research findings by the Africa Youth Development Link titled Youth Opportunities in the Oil and Gas Sector in Uganda reveals that citizens are late, especially for the core jobs in the sector. Katwe, located on the outskirts of Kampala city, is known by many as the home of some of the country's best welders and craftsmen. Mention it and these men will do it. From fabricating doors, windows, beds, machines, they have won the hearts of many for producing the finest metalworks. Katwe has over 1,000 men and women who have become artisans in welding and fabrication. One would think that welding the pipeline and the refinery presents a great opportunity for the welders. I visited Katwe to find out if any of these welders know about the opportunities that the oil sector presents. These craftsmen have self-confidence and skills that they can weld the pipeline, but only lament that government has not sensitized them on how to take advantage of these opportunities. <laughs> I was however informed that there was a team from the Ministry of Energy that mobilized over 40 top welders from Katwe for a selection process to take part in a one-year certification training run by the Chicago Bridge and Iron Company, a large American engineering procurement and construction company that specializes in projects for the oil and gas companies. However, only one was selected to undergo this training. Simon Kawesa is one of the best welders in Katwe. He knows about this selection process. <laughs>
Kawesa admits that the craftsmen in Katwe are not professional enough to take on the challenge of welding the pipeline. Omuendo ogusinga obunje kwa bavuvu kabe tuyina na dala kati wanu mukatwe. Bwekuba kuteka kuwa ya leya kabalungi. Neke baita professional welding si balungi. He adds that the welders here just do basic welding. Inaba na bana wa mukatwe be tulina wan. Wete gereze nye byuma byocha it is either 1 mm 1.2 or 1.5. Kati zinsi bena millimeters 6 plus. He faults government for not preparing the youth early enough. Mebo yandi bade tende kabavuka nga enkumi bidi buli mwaka. Mefu nebi ebife byola bebigaze byegaze tinzeni. Nebatkuma weki for chimunga nebate kama bavuka aba 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 bwabe enkumi yezi. Unkula irira. Jige gani kwa yuzo kubwa kemi yaka katiasa kujiba ina. Na government yoke yini yini eweza factories makumi yaga. Hatenga wana abali wili njo jiko lira. Kawesa's outcry to government is re-echoed by the young craftsmen who are optimistic that they can tap into the opportunity in the near future. Kwa kwenye tukeza kula natuete ndeka emili moji no? Okuma nyanti tulibasa jaba kempu funyo singa tukunye mtu watu atu, atu yamba kukole jemilo tukole mtu ebi nja ulu Munu, umofe mkatu ya ninga tukosa welding Avante ba uwele betusura kukola Kukola Only 22 welders from different parts of the country made it through the selection process The 22 recently graduated as the first internationally certified Ugandan oil and gas welders However, welding the pipeline may require more than 1,500 welders, which creates fears that oil companies like Sino Cantotal will have to import in certified welders. Betty Namubiru is the national content manager of the National Petroleum Authority. The welders we have around here, they are not up to speed. Because if they say, 3G structure welding is supposed to be like this, but because you know 3G, you've been done, you begin from this side, the technical people can explain on how you're supposed to do it. If it's 3G structure welding, this is the process that you're supposed to follow. So some of those things are missing and you end up, instead of going straight to certification, you have to do some training first, then you assess and certify. Despite this, she's optimistic that Uganda will not import any technical person to take on the opportunities. Uh, we are planning at a uh, training of 200 welders that has already been launched. The welders are, yeah, it has already been launched. It's going to be done by Q Sourcing and another firm called E360. It's going to be done and the training is going to be focused in the Albertine Graben where we expect to draw these people. While efforts are on to train as many welders as possible for certification, the standards are equally high for the non-skilled labor force. Every service provider to the oil and gas industry will require certification by international agencies to guarantee the quality of the product supplied. The Ministry of Energy has already established a database for service providers to take them through the certification process. These have been uh, put together in a database. First of all, to indicate to the investors that these are the people that we have available. We believe that this is one of the proactive uh, uh, measures that we've taken to ensure that our local uh, companies are identified to be able to supply. Even with such a database in place, questions have already been raised as to who and how someone's company gets to the database. This, according to Godwin Muhezi, an expert on oil and gas, could naturally weed out the youth and other service providers from taking advantage of the opportunities in the sector. The qualifications might be stringent that only the privileged will be able to meet them. And so we need to do a lot of checking to see that normal Ugandans can actually get skills in the sector, can be pre-qualified, can enter the database and can actually get jobs. Because otherwise it will be survival for the fittest. Muwezi argues that to ensure equity and equality of the service providers, the Ministry of Energy should have decentralized the service delivery. The Ministry of Agriculture will be allowed to vet agricultural producers on their own and submit a list to the petroleum sector. 
Ministry of Labor will look at the labor requirements, submit like that, so that we are sure that we are having it spread out. And the Ugandan can be confident that if I go and do my master's in oil and gas anything, and I enter the database, I'll be on the waiting list for when an opportunity comes up. The food service sector is one that presents a number of opportunities to the youth to take advantage of. However, there are fears that the certification process and standards could make it a walk in the park for them to tap into the sector. Because in the past they would present their tomatoes, their vegetables, their everything, rice, and it would be rejected. So through these uh, trade links, a system was put up to train, to demonstrate, to expose these people to the uh, practices that are required. Not to require them to go somewhere and train and get a certification and say that I'm a certified farmer from a supplier, but just to look within their means to look at the system, just like you said, how do you harvest, how do you handle, how do you store, how do you package to get to the market. Quality standards may not be the only challenge. Quantity will be the elephant in the room. We have cases where we've had an opportunity to get a Ugandan farm, to supply, but along the way, one month down the contract, they are not able to continue because of the quantity. This then raises questions as to who will be best placed to manage these requirements, except for big companies with a significant capital base. Emmy or team, a youth leader, opines that for the youth to tap into this space, there is need for a capital boost from government. With the youth fund that is available, they need to up it a little bit. To say that uh, the maximum is 25 million is not enough to be able to start a, a good SME company that can tap into the oil industry. So I would like uh, government to expand the opportunity for how much funding young people can have access to to be able to prepare for this kind of uh, subsidiary industries. Otim says that even when the youth get enough capital, there is little interest in the agriculture ventures for many youth. So the food part for me is a big opportunity for young people to come into. But again, as you know, young people are not very much interested in agriculture. Again, we would like to go into agriculture, but we don't like the standards that come with it. He, however, says that there are other opportunities that the youth can tap into. You can get over 5,000 other products out of petroleum alone. Uh, because uh, using petroleum, you, you get plastics, pesticides, herbicides, uh, uh, and a lot of other things that come with it. So I'm, I'm more interested, and I think it is easier for us to prepare to deal with the subsidiary industries that come out of the oil sector. The other opportunities to tap into is the automobile industry, which will require a significant number of truck drivers with specific driving licenses. Even with all these opportunities that the oil and gas sector provides, Lillian Abba, the chairperson of the Youth Council, fears that the lack of a proper local content policy We'll see foreign farms take up most of these opportunities. We want to see policies coming up from government encouraging local suppliers, you know. We want to see policies coming up and giving investors conditions that when you are going to, you, you are going to partner with us in this, uh, in this venture, maybe drilling, we, you must ensure that 70% of the employees are Ugandans. This is also re-echoed by Godwin Muwezi an expert in oil and gas. The local content uh, law uh, ring fences certain jobs, human resources, foods, and uh, locally available materials. But it also provides for joint ventures uh, where local companies can work with uh, foreign investors on certain projects. The challenge with that is that the definition, for example, of what a local company is, is that it is incorporated in Uganda, majority shareholding, it employs about 70% Ugandans. But you can actually have a company owned by a foreigner meeting those standards and it's not necessarily Ugandan in the real sense of the word. So there are very many loopholes in the local content law that can be bypassed to get a foreigner posed as a Ugandan. The call for massive sensitization on the available opportunities, especially among the youth, is also as loud as ever. They did so well on land issues, you know of uh, talking to the people around Oima about their land and they were convincing they didn't see any rejection or objections. But we also need to do this in terms of labor. The same 
segments of people will come up and say, oh, we are left out, oh, we are, we are focusing more on, you know, getting the output and getting the technical aspect. The oil opportunities could easily slip through the palms of many youth if government does not raise up to take full responsibility of training its own labor force, especially the young people, to take advantage of these opportunities. Solomon Serwanza, NBS, live at nine.